Hey everyone, you're watching We Had That, and today I'm going to talk about the 1984 Wave 3 G.I. Joe Copperhead action figure. I loved G.I. Joe figures from the moment I first found them in the store in 1982. I wanted every single figure in the line for the first few waves. When the third wave hit in 1984, I was already all in. But the addition of the G.I. Joe pets like Junkyard combined with awesome figures like Firefly and the one everyone I knew wanted in 1984, Storm Shadow, really made 1984 a standout year for G.I. Joe. Hasbro was also still knocking it out of the park in 1984 with some amazing vehicles as well. From the Cobra Claw, which was always a favorite of mine, to the Vamp Mark II and the Cobra Stinger, even Zartan's Chameleon was cool. But Cobra's Water Moccasin was one of my favorites for the entire time I played with G.I. Joe. Right out of the box, I thought the pilot of the Water Moccasin was one of the coolest figures of the year, and that's saying a lot considering some of the figures that we got in 1984. Most Cobra vehicle drivers were just generic troops, but the Water Moccasin pilot was a specific guy named Copperhead. Interestingly, I had two different variations of this figure, so when I played with them, they were usually just generic troops rather than specific characters. The 1984 Water Moccasin was one of my favorite G.I. Joe vehicles, and I don't know how this happened, but I somehow ended up with two of them. Here is a terrible picture from 1980-something of my two water moccasins zipping around the swamps under the Christmas tree. I can just barely see Copperhead and Copperhead in their respective vehicles. I love these figures so much that they had just as many adventures without their vehicles, so they weren't limited to the swamps. If I remember correctly, I believe I even used them as dreadnoughts occasionally before I had any actual dreadnought figures. According to Copperhead's file card, he was from Florida. Unlike many of the exotic locations of origin for the G.I. Joe figures like Louisville, Kentucky or St. Louis, Missouri, which I only knew about from social studies class, I'd actually been to Florida several times. I could picture this guy growing up in the swamps that I'd visited on vacation. His file card went on to say that he liked to race speedboats and gamble. Gung Ho said he could drive a swamp buggy like the devil himself, rebuild a V8 engine with a coat hanger and spit, and raise cane all night. That just made me think of the bikers and the good old boys who lived everywhere in Georgia outside of Atlanta. These guys could fix your car with duct tape and a paperclip. I'd met plenty of these guys. I couldn't really relate to a guy in a blue suit and a silver helmet, or a woman who came from royalty. But Copperhead? I knew this guy. Copperhead wore some pretty bright colors even for the 1980s. His helmet was teal with a matching teal muscle shirt, armbands, gloves, and pants. But the pants had what looked to me like bright green padding on the inside of the legs and a harness on the crotch. He wore a holster for a pistol on his chest and black boots. He had another holster on his right leg. Although Hasbro repainted a lot of their figures for release in different waves, there aren't a lot of significant variants to a figure within a single release. Copperhead is probably one of the biggest exceptions for the figures that I had growing up. There were two variations of the original figure that came with the water moccasin. The second version had a bright green stripe on the top of his head that matches the padding between the legs. He also had matching green armbands and gloves. In 1989, a repaint of Copperhead was released as part of the Python Patrol, which was sold carded with black versions of Leatherneck's gun and backpack as his accessories. In the Sunbow G.I. Joe cartoon, Copperhead made a few appearances. His first was a very strangely colored version that you can see only for a second in the opening credits of Revenge of Cobra. Copperhead appears for the first time in a full-length episode in Jungle Trap, where he's first seen piloting a water moccasin to aid in a cobra kidnapping. He shows up again piloting a water moccasin covered in cobra troopers, and Smack talks Duke and Snake Eyes. 
He pulls a pistol on Rakondo, but Rock and Roll kicks it out of his hand and the Joe team takes the Cobras, along with Copperhead, prisoner. In part two of the episode Synthoid Conspiracy, Copperhead pilots the water moccasin as Cobra troops search the swamp for Duke. When they find him, Duke easily overpowers the Cobra troops, but Copperhead pulls a gun on him. Fortunately, Mutt and Junkyard arrive just in time to take him out. Copperhead's last appearance in the Sunbow cartoons was in the episode Worlds Without End Part 1. As Steeler climbs the side of a bridge, Copperhead, who is holding a device called the Transmuter, grabs Steeler's leg in an attempt to get a set of blueprints from him. Steeler kicks Copperhead's hand, causing him to accidentally fire the transmuter, destroying the bridge, and sending the Joe team to a parallel universe. Once the Sunbow series had ended, the new G.I. Joe cartoon series starts with a five-part Operation Dragonfire movie. Copperhead can be seen in all five parts. In part one, he's just in it for one shot, standing around with the other Cobras in the temple. In part two, the first time we see him, it looks like there are actually two of him manning the guns on two Cobra hovercrafts. We see him a few minutes later when Destro gives him an order to remain in the caves in command of Dragonfire Base 1. In part three, we see three Copperheads simultaneously piloting hovercrafts, then in the jungle talking with an alley viper. This is the first Operation Dragonfire part where Copperhead has any dialogue. The fourth part is really the one that includes Copperhead the most. We see him for a second in the jungle as the Joes retreat. We then see him give a uniform to Cobra Commander, which is apparently exactly the kind of resourcefulness that Cobra Commander needed for his first commanding officer of Python Patrol. So he zaps him with a ray that changes the colors of his outfit. I would have preferred to just change clothes without a ray myself. Anyway, from this point on, whenever we see Copperhead, it's in the Python Patrol outfit. Now that he has a new outfit, Copperhead knows how to fly a Conquest jet and goes after Scoop at the command of Serpentor. In the final episode of Operation Dragonfire, we first see Copperhead in a room while Cobra is making their attack plans against the G.I. Joes. And finally, Copperhead shows off his massive computer skills while transmitting the Dragonfire to Python Patrol. I have no idea why they didn't just use a Python Patrol Televiper, another figure they were trying to sell at the time, for this scene, but oh well. Copperhead didn't show up much in the comic book. His first appearance wasn't actually in a G.I. Joe comic book at all. It was a single image of him in Marvel Age 20 from 1984. Although the water moccasin did appear a few times in the regular G.I. Joe comics, Copperhead never did make an appearance. He did have a page in Order of Battle number 3, which was just one image with the information from his file card, but that's about it for Copperhead in the comics. The water moccasin is pictured on the cover of the G.I. Joe Find Your Fate book, The Everglades Swamp Terror. I think Copperhead is piloting the water moccasin here, but I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell. Like most vehicle drivers, Copperhead didn't show up much on box art. I'm pretty sure the water moccasin box was the only time he appeared on box art. I feel like Copperhead could have been included in the G.I. Joe media a lot more than he was, but by 1984, there was no shortage of characters, and since the real selling point was his vehicle, I can understand why Copperhead wasn't more of a featured character. Still, I thought he was great. What do you think of Copperhead? Did you have a Copperhead figure as a kid? If so, was it the dark gloves version or the light gloves version? Was he a favorite figure of yours, or did he mostly just hide out in the swamps by himself? Tell me in the comments below. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. And one last thing, if you're a fan of toys, you should know about Toy Lanta the biggest toy show in the southeastern United States held annually just north of Atlanta, Georgia. 
Visit toylanta.com for more information. As always, thanks for watching.